What's up, Star Wars fans? My name is Prince, and I'm an urban acolyte. So I want to talk to you guys about this article I read earlier today about J.J. Abrams' comments about Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi. Um, so uh, if you're new here, I talk about Star Wars, superhero movies, and martial arts films. And if that sounds like it's your kind of thing, hey, make sure you subscribe. And uh, if you're already subscribed and you haven't enabled th those notifications, hey, ring that bell down below so you'll know when I'm posting new videos. You know, y'all got to support your boy. Anyway, uh, I read this article today and basically J.J. Abrams, I guess it's funny. It's coming on a, a kind of as a response to the big news from a few days ago about Ryan Johnson saying that he's not worried about if. Uh, episode nine retcons things from the last Jedi. And in the last video, I think it was the last video I posted, you know, I said I wouldn't really bet on that happening. What I said is I think that JJ is going to take what you got in the last Jedi and it's just going to expand on that. I'm going to come back to that in a moment because JJ Abrams comments were that, Hey man, uh, he kind of, when he went in, when he sat down with the brain trust, the story group, Everyone, the uh, Michael Arndt and uh, everyone else writing, working on uh, The Force Awakens during the production stages. This is all the way back in 2012, I believe. And they started kind of mapping out, this is how we're going to resurrect Star Wars. This is where we're going with the sequel saga. He actually had ideas if he were the one that was going to do Episode 8 and 9. And what J.J. said is that Episode 8, The Last Jedi, that was not what he was that was not what he would have done right ryan johnson did this intense character study focusing on on luke and the whole thing with luke ray and kylo ren you know that thing uh and then uh finn and his his hero's journey and then poe the development of his character and separating the three the three heroes i guess and making them have to uh figure out things on their own without the aid of their allies, right? And then you've got the whole Skywalker thing going on. What's going on with the family? With Luke and with with uh, Leia and with Ben, right? And then the, the, the ghost of Han because he's part of the Skywalker thing, part of the, you know, the original trio of Luke, Han, and Leia. You know, so his ghost, the ghost of Han is present throughout the movie with, uh, with his, his little die that, you know or hanging there on the Millennium Falcon, Luke sees him and R2, you know, powers up and help me, Obi-Wan, you're our only hope. And it's right, like the same thing to Luke. Help us, you're you're our only hope, right? It's 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 falling on you now, right? And then at the end scene when Luke has the die that he gives to Leia and then Leia leaves him there because she knows they're not real and Kylo Ben picks him up and then they fade to nothing and it's like, you know, just like where previously during their lightsaber battle, Luke is like, you know, strike me down in anger and I'll always be with you. Just like your father. And he fades away. Ben goes in there and the, the die, the reminder of his dad fades away. Right. But it's still there. It's still a part of you. Right. Um, so it, it, the last Jedi did some really interesting things. Um, I think a lot of people aren't going to really appreciate what it did for Star Wars, for this story in particular, but for Star Wars as a whole, until until we get later down the line, if, if there's going to be more Star Wars. So we could either be, this is the movie that killed Star Wars, or this is the movie that made it possible for us to start covering the Old Republic and, uh, you know, stuff in, in the unknown regions or wild space or whatever else they decide to do that's coming down the pipeline with the, the Dan and Dave trilogy and with uh, the Ryan Johnson trilogy, right? But, you know, like I said, this this wasn't what J.J. would have done. And the beautiful thing about him coming back to finish up, it's like, okay, you had these ideas. You kind of had an idea in your mind. Maybe everyone else didn't. But, you know you the 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 plan initially was we're going to run this like a relay race jj you start ryan johnson picks up the middle leg and colin is going to finish out the the final stretch of the race right and that didn't happen it came back to jj 
And maybe it was, well, JJ, you kind of had your own vision of this. We don't know what was going on in the back, you know, in the background with Kathy Kennedy and and uh, Rain Roberts and Kiri Hart when she was still with the story group. She's she's moved on to a consultant. She's a consultant with the story group. So don't don't believe the hype that some of these uh, we hate Star Wars, but we talk about Star Wars 24 seven channels are telling you that. That she quit, she got fired, whatever. She's still a consultant, but she's doing this project for um for to inspire like women in in writing to to get into film writing and whatnot, right? Something that that she wants to do, right? You know, you 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 work and you get in these positions, and then you can work on projects that mean something to you. You know, maybe she was kind of at the point where, you know, I don't really want to just talk about be the person over the story group as far as Star Wars and any other Lucasfilm properties goes. But that's a tangent. My point is, is that uh, those those conversations, we don't know what they were, but maybe JJ said, look, this was my big vision when I started and this is where I'd like it to go. And maybe they say, hey, we like that. So take what Ryan did, take what you did, take what Ryan did as a response to your work. It wasn't what you would have done, but it was a response it's the second leg. And now you've got to make that fit back into your vision. So is it a course correction? Yes and no. It's not a course correction that some of the people who, if, if you're a person who didn't like The Last Jedi and you need it retcon, you need Star Wars corrected. But it's a course correction in the sense that J.J. had this idea for this 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 big story. This is where I would like it to go. But I'm only working on this one and I just have to leave it up to the fates or whatever and, and see if see where these guys go with the story. And now I've got the opportunity. Now I can finish it off the way I kind of envisioned it from the beginning. Right. So I, I don't know. We got a lot. We got a lot of stuff to 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 talk about. As far as episode nine that's really nothing. We have a lot to talk about, but we don't have anything to talk about. You get what I'm saying? It's like, you know, uh, what, tomorrow or the next day, we'll get a trailer for for the episode nine. And, and then all this talk, right? This thing I read today about, you know, there's some kind of parasite or symbiote oracle that Kylo Ren is going to consult with. And that could bring about his redemption arc, right? And he's and there's going to be some Raylo stuff where he's in love with Ray, but she wants to help him, but she's not really. And and I'm like, man, I've heard so much stuff, and this is coming from this some person Jedi Praxis on Reddit who appears to have presented correct information at one point in time. I don't know, but it it, it sounds crazy to me. And uh, I don't know some of the stuff I'm hearing about episode nine, these alleged leaks. I'm like, man, it it's like sounds like it's going to be the craziest thing ever. And I don't necessarily mean crazy in a good way. So I don't know. Some people get a joy out of like just I got inside information. I'm right sometimes and I'm wrong sometimes. I'm hit and miss. I don't know. The Oracle thing sounds crazy to me. I thought about doing a full video on it, but I'm kind of tired uh, from my workout and speaking of working workouts, Hey, um, I'm, I'm looking for some new, uh, coaching clients. I got some, some open spots available. Um, if you want to, uh, set up a consultation call, Hey, there's a, there's a link down below, uh, fill out that survey. I'll be in touch with you. Uh, hopefully within 24 hours to set up a consultation call, we can talk about your goals and whatnot and see if we're a good fit for each other. And, uh, maybe I can help you take your first steps into a bigger world towards becoming the hero of your own story. And for me, I call that being an urban acolyte. But uh, that's all I really got for this one. What do you guys think about what I've been saying about, you know, uh, well, first off, the JJ is said, look, what Ryan Johnson did with The Last Jedi, that's not what I would have done, right? He might have played up on some ideas and answered some questions, but it's not where I was planning to take the middle, the middle movie in this trilogy. Um, and then just the idea that it's not necessarily a course correction in episode nine, but it's, this is what JJ kind of envisioned how he thought, saw things playing out. And now he has the opportunity to take what he started. And this goes all the way back to the first video I ever did on star Wars on the force awakens 
after I saw the movie, I said, look, JJ has created a sandbox, right? Like these sandbox video games. He's established the rules for the game, right? Just like he's the, the what is it? The game master or something when you play these tabletop. I don't play that stuff. Uh, probably never will. And, you know, that's no offense to y'all who, who do. It, it's just not my thing, right? Um, I, I just, I don't do it. Um, nothing wrong with it. Hey, well, I play online RPGs, which are based on tabletop games and, and the 20 side die, you know, when you get into the, so I play them. I just have to play them on a computer where I can move around with my character and see colors and think I'm doing something. But anyway, my point is, so JJ is like the lore master. He established the rules for the game, right? And I said, now other people can come into this sandbox and they can tell their stories but now it's like, so the Lord Master established the, the game, the rule set, and then Ryan told his story within that sandbox, and now the Lord Master can come back and finish off the campaign. And if you're into that kind of stuff, you probably dug that. And hey, that's one of the first things I ever said in one of the first videos about Star Wars on this channel. So you should you should hop back into time and, and check out that video, because hey, man. I've been dope since day one. <laughs> but anyway, that's all I got for this one. So what are your thoughts on, you know, this idea of JJ uh, bringing, bringing the story all the way back around and bringing it home? What are you looking forward to seeing? What do you hope to see? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I'll be checking back to see what you have to say. And if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead, click that subscribe button and take your first steps towards becoming an urban acolyte. Embark on the journey of becoming the hero of your own story become a force for change in your community and you can continue to support the channel by checking out uh, more videos i think this is the right side right or or the yeah they're right here uh or you can check out the video that uh youtube has made especially for you those should be episode nine videos so it's either theories or news or something i don't know you should check it out but uh that's all i got for this one so thanks for watching thanks for hanging out y'all keep on breathing and may the force of others be with you always.